Mom? Didn't mean for that to happen. Where's Mom? What you doing? Well, you caught me at the greatest moment. Where's Mom? I saw you working on something. I was like, I, I should probably record this. Yeah, Where's you saw me working on something Where's that Mom? I Where's am Mom? probably not doing correctly, or that I'm just doing it the hard way. I was gonna say there's, there are power tools in this household. <laughs> It's gotten to that point. <laughs> I just don't even care anymore. <laughs> oh gosh. Ah. Oh. oh, I'm here. I'm just, I'm just gonna let you do it. It's such something to do with your hands. It's a therapeutic unlocking, unwinding of the stress. Mama. Why? Welcome back to the channel, y'all. We're giving her a good old house dangle today. And, uh, well, this might be the last house dangle that we do. Last house vlog? Which was? No, I mean, this might be the last house oh, vlog. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. OSG, she just, she is, uh, I've hit a wall. she has hit a wall. I've she's a wall. experiencing a high amount of stress and she's, she's ready. She's ready to move. And we have some news on that. Before I tell them the news, can I get you like a power tool with a T25 attachment just to just to unlock that? No. You just want to hand strip it? No, because I'm I'm dedicated now. You're dedicated. It's it's like a power of will thing. Okay. I'm here now. We're still here. We're still here at the house. Colonel Sanders still here. We're all having a a, a, a gay old time, but. We have found the next house, folks. Yippee, Woo! Skippy. Uh, will Colonel be coming with us? I don't know. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not sure he'll be allowed at the next spot. We'd have to do some schmoozing. Uh, but anyway, Colonel Sanders might might come with the with the sale of the home. We got some giant holes happening. You got it down finally. Got All it right. Down. So to, to shore up everything, we had uh, our engineer come out to give a, a report. They do something called a hydrostatic test, make sure there's no leaks and everything. He had a couple little recommendations that we could adjust some peers. And we're like, okay, no big deal. We've got a lifetime warranty on all that stuff. So we'll just have the guys come out. They said it'll take one day. It'll be wham, bam. Thank you, Sam, on your way. Well, we're four days later and we got some big old mega holes. That's not even the biggest one. That is not even the biggest one. The problem was some of the piers that they installed were inside of the house when they did it. And in order for them to readjust them, they'd have to like basically rip out our basement floor. We said we didn't want to do that. So they said we can do it still, but instead of like a day, it's going to take us like a couple days and we're going to have to go deep, way deep. And part of our house is kind of like a basement. So I didn't really understand what, what deep, really was until I walked outside this morning and I saw this hole right here. It is in fact so deep that you can't even really see the bottom because of the darkness. Let me, uh, let me stick the camera in here, pop the brightness up a little bit. And now you can see, you can see up under there and you see the actual slab, you see the, uh, the pea gravel that they laid down, you see the layers of earth. I think I might see a couple dinosaur bones in there, actually. That hole, if you fell in that hole, you'd never get out. <laughs> Hence the caution tape around there. It's probably, it's probably why that's there. You found the power tool? Yeah, I guess you were smart. I was just, you know, trying to get some aggression out. I like getting aggression out with the power tool. It feels I guess good. So. Taking those hangers, those are important to yeah, you guys. They see. are. I, I put the kids' toys on those. I mean, I bought these from Amazon, okay? Everything counts. All right, I can't think the kids are playing in the holes uh -oh. over here. Better go get them. You know, what's, what's worse, a swimming pool with toddlers or giant 10 foot holes in your yard? And I think one of them is actually 10 foot. Guys, get off the tape, please. Get off. It's great when you have like a for sale sign in your yard and there's caution tape and people driving by probably think that like, someone was murdered here. So there once was a tale of a man with a shovel that dug deep, so deep 
and so rapidly that he split the water sprinkler electrical wires, which now need to be prepared. And that is how the story goes with home ownership. Wa bam! Just when you think you're done, there's more things to do. Bam! God, you gotta keep an active spirit too. Uh, don't get down. You do. You do. Don't get down, because guess what? There's, there's another light bulb that needs to be changed always around the corner. So what we're gonna do here, I got these nifty little things. If you guys don't know what this is, this will change your life. This is a Wago. These are like little Lego blocks for connecting wires. And for people that are electrical challenge, mechanically challenged, sort of like myself, I'd like to think that I am, but I'm, I'm not good at it. This really helps because you don't have to uh, sit there and, you know, tie the connectors together, the wires, and you know, do the whole tape thing and, and all that stuff. You can use these. Uh, just to ch kind of check the connection, because I don't know which sprinklers are going to which wires anymore. We're gonna put these wagos on there and you can actually disconnect them just as easily as you can put them on. So it makes it really convenient. Let's go down in this don't, hole. Don't fall. That's... Oh, by the way, don't step right here because this is like- Soft? Yeah, it's soft and it's there's not much earth okay. underneath it. Okay, well so that's that's great to know. Let's just let's just look at the depth here. Oh my gosh. Am I gonna get you back up? You're, yeah, you're probably gonna have to help me back up. There he goes. Oh. Okay, now I'm about six feet tall. So this hole is around six foot. There's another one next to me that is even deeper. But let me see the camera. I want to show the show the folks at home oh. what's happening down here. All right, here we go. Deep into the under. You guys are going under. You guys are going under my house right now. I don't know what's living down here even. Hopefully nothing. What could be down here? Yeah, it's so dark in there. You can barely you can barely see anything. Thankfully they didn't. Uh, smells very earthy get any skeletons or anything remains from the previous homeowners so this is the pier thing that they use to uh adjust the levels on the home well, let's look is there any is there any like arrowheads or anything cool that we could find in here most most texas homes don't have basements but we got one and it's down there so pretty cool pretty cool to uh it actually makes me feel really good about our house. See like how, how far it goes down. I didn't think it went down this far. I, I mean, I knew we had a basement, but it wasn't like clicking with me. <laughs> so it's actually kind of kind of crazy. And it's always cool down there, which is nice. But anyways, I don't really know what this one is going to. Let me see those little red, red snippy snips there. Got a little too much length here. Well, bam, look at that. Pulling on that hard, it's not coming out. Let's connect it up. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. It's like I even knew you were joking, but I'm still reacting. Solid. Okay, yeah, so the problem is there's, there's five different sprinkler zones, I think, and I don't know. That's nice, they left one untouched. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they got through the third or fourth one, they were like, yeah, maybe we should stop cutting these. Yeah, see, I don't know where. They're on this side. So here's what we're gonna try. We're gonna try to connect one okay. and then go through the zones on the thing and see which one turns on. What if none of them do? Then Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Something's going on out there. What's going on up there? I don't know, I don't know, somebody's crying. Somebody's <laughs> crying. Emmy, Emmy whacked me. I heard Emmy whacked me. Bro, bro and sis, no, fight game. Yeah. Oh, I was an only child growing up, so I really didn't have the privilege to, to fight with my sister or brother. But now I get to experience all of it. So I'm gonna attempt to get out of this hole if my, my beautiful camera lady can uh, possibly come back over here. Also, look how many rocks. Look at the rocks that are just in here. He says, Daddy, I want to go in that hole. You want to come in here? I don't think so, buddy. All right, guys, here we go. Ugh. I want to get down there. No, buddy, you can't go down there. Yeah, can you, can you uh, yeah. All right, there we go. Uh, quickly, before we try the uh, sprinkler, I just want to show you. Make sure he does not go down yeah. there. 
just want to show you the other one that is mega deep mega 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 deep guys that one's the 10 footer that one's crazy like i can't i literally i don't know how they even got out of there to be honest with you you got two. Okay, well I had it plugged in for one. Okay. So I'm just gonna have to keep playing around with the wires until until I get it dialed in, but we have water. We, we have, have sprinklers. Water. So do you have to like rezone it? Do you have to reconnect it to a two-wire? I'm gonna have to yeah, basically play with the wires until I find out which zone is what. Homeowner, um what was that game? Operation? Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah, it's like a puzzle. It's a puzzle game. It's fun times. Definitely taking the wind chimes. Wind chimes? You kidding me? Uh, yes. I the mean, vibes. I was. Don't leave those here. I'm never gonna leave those here. Wind chimes are expensive. Does anybody know that? Wind chimes. That was like hundred dollars. How, just think of how good that makes you feel. Yeah. That's worth a dollar, right? Just that right well, there. That's a lot more I than a dollar. My brother's eating a pecan. <laughs> you know. Uh, you what? My brother's eating a pecan. Where'd you find it? I found it. You eating yard nuts? I bless it. Here, do you want to give it? you eat the shell too? Yeah. Oh gosh. Look, I found a, Some extra I found fiber. a caterpillar that's been eating my rose bush. Wow, look at, wow. Look at this. Look at this dude. That's a tomato caterpillar. That's a big boy. That looks like those one in, ones in Lion King uh -huh. that Simone and Pumba <laughs> eat. He has a thorn on him. I don't really want to get him down. It's kind of mean. That thing looks horny. <laughs> He's creepy. Everybody laugh. Let's cook him up a catfish. Yeah. In the kitchen with OSG now. I got the sprinklers running. This is a home block, so just bear with me. A little sporadic. But we're going to make some fish. Now, I caught a... Me and a buddy, we caught a 15 pound blue cat, a PB record for my jug game just the other day. And we already cooked these uh, into steaks and they were so big, quite honestly. Uh, I'm not sure if I, I should have cut them down more before I, I prepared them. It was like, it was just so thick that it uh, was a little chewier than normal. Like the five to eight pound blue cat, magnificent. But it seems like if you get over 12 pounds, maybe they start getting a little thick. So I'm going to try something different tonight. I'm going to cut them into strips and we're going to do fry. Yes, I know. I'm feeling a golden crispy, guys. I need it. I need a little golden crispy in my life right now because let me tell you something. It's been, it's been heck. It's been heck. We've, we've conquered the big hill, though, of finding the house that we really like. I think you guys are going to love it. There's some little gems in there. Uh, I'm so excited to s spend the next decade or two or my, the rest of our lives over there at this house. So uh, that is coming shortly. Uh, the other thing that has been stressful for me is I have, I have uh, fasted from coffee. Mm, that I, explains Does that explain so some things? Much. Yes, you've been like just down. I'd say it down. Yeah. My three vices really, I mean coffee. I love my my cold brews. I mean not not cold brew. I like my cold bears. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then I like cold brewskis. I like nicotine too. It's it, it's it, I'm I'm addicted to all three of those things. I have I have pushed the nicotine out quite a bit out of my life. I'm not going to say, you know, every once in a while I'll be out there on the lake with, with my bros and then I, it's just got to happen. It's just got to happen. And, uh, oh my gosh, when you get in the deer blind, huh? Heck it's tough. But anyway, uh, I've cut off coffee. I'm not cutting off the cold brews right now. It's, it's daggum football Sunday. I haven't even had one yet. No, I'm, I'm chosen for one. We don't even have any. <laughs> uh, but the coffee cutoff, the coffee cutoff has been has been uh, really tough. I had headaches for the last few days, and um, let me show you guys what I've been drinking instead. All right, this really sucks not drinking coffee. I'm just gonna just gonna state the obvious. But I take uh, I take this right here, okay, Sacred Seven, 
and then this blue lotus chai put that in there this gives you a little kick all right now it's it's got some caffeine i don't know how much is in there but it's not like coffee you're not going to feel fully awakened and osg she doesn't have her coffee wow. uh, look out i have done the no coffee wear thing. shoulder pads <laughs> done the no coffee thing especially when i was pregnant with ben i mean for nine months i did not have coffee you find a will and a way you do you know, but i when, don't when you're pregnant i but. might need to find a will to get off of here's it. what i hear I, now selfishly here's kind of the deal with that for me is uh and it's i'd say it's the same thing it's the same way with nicotine too yeah. it's like if you yeah. You gotta, it, like you want, you always want to feel that first feeling of like when you had a great cup of espresso or a great cup of coffee or, you know, that first time you threw a chaw in, you know what I mean? I and, wouldn't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know what I mean, thankfully. But that goes away after a while and you're like, wow, I just do this because, I don't know, it's like a habit. Yeah. So when that goes away, you gotta just, you gotta just switch it up. You gotta cut it off. So when I go back to coffee here in a month, that's usually my my let off is I'll do uh, no coffee for a month and I come back to that first cup and I'm ready to conquer the world. It feels so good. So anyway, that's how that's how I get through it. Maybe I need to do that with wine. You give up coffee and I'll give up wine. Yeah, OSG's that? vice is wine. Mine is wine. She's Dad. she is a mom wine wine gal, hundred mm -hmm. percent. 100%. You know, nothing to be, nothing to be unashamed, ashamed of here. It's, it's just getting to be the point where I'm ashamed. <laughs> let me tell you, when you have double kids, when you got double kids and it's five o'clock and they're screaming their heads off and you're just trying to put a meal together and they've already had a tantrum of a day, it's wine time. Mm -hmm. First thing we want to do, cut the bag, get the moisture off the fish. Look at this specimen, guys. An absolute specimen. Just a little thick uh, to cook in a pan and not uh, do any oven baking as well. I just, I don't know, I'm a little, I'm just looking at the meat and I feel like it has more connective tissue than a small one, so we're gonna cut it up. All right, now since it's kind of an experimenting night, I'm gonna try something. Normally, I just go dry. I go right into the mix uh, with the fish, but I'm gonna try putting some mustard on there tonight as a binder. Start with that, just a little a dab. There we go, now we're gonna add our crispy. Now they're already golden. Just gonna flail that around in there. I mean, it's really sticking, it's making a thick coat, that's good. That's good. Okay, let's party with some fish. Wow, that's a nug. That's a good looking nug. And these should pick up pretty fast. In approximately two minutes, I think we're ready for a flip. The middle ones are ready to go. Oh, yeah. A little bit of coating removal. Looks like a very healthy fry, though. I'm not gonna lie. All right, this is embarrassing, but we had a failure. <laughs> we had major stickage after the first flip. Didn't have enough oil. Something with the do? mustard. I don't know. Would you? The, the, the binder bind it to the pan. It wasn't good. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, our oil was not correct. But would you have rather air fried it? I don't like. I don't trust air frying. Yeah. Okay. I like its results. I don't trust the machine. Yeah, I hear that. Just not. Look at this. I'm chefed up. I'm chefed up, and I made an embarrassing dish. <laughs> if I was gonna serve this to Ramsey, Gordon <laughs> Ramsey, he would rip me a new. New orifice, man. You go, what even is this, sir? <laughs> You'd be a little more rude than that. No, what think. do you but, call this? <laughs> uh, hopefully, we're going to have a tenderness, though. That was really my, my curiosity with it. So, hopefully, there's a tenderness to it. Do you smell mustard? or? Hardly, only because I know it's there. I don't know if that I would... Okay. No, it smells... 
smells good. All right, well, we're gonna see how that's gonna go. A <sighs> couple more days. We're gonna be cooking fish in the new house. Lord help us. Hallelujah. Moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. I present to you the mustard crusted thick cat. A little tougher than usual. Mm -hmm. A little tougher. I think it's the fish. That's not bad though. <laughs> That's actually pretty tasty. I don't mind the mustard. Mm -mm. Actually. It's pretty good, actually. I think a lot of the zest comes from our batter too, but it's just, it's a little tougher. Yeah, but it's pretty good. I'm, I would... I'm glad we chose to do it this way. Mm -hmm. It's like a piece of chicken. I would definitely put it more like a chicken. Mm -hmm. It's that thick. It does not exhibit the the juicy flakiness of a a young one. Mm. Okay, my verdict. If it's over ten, leave it in. Usually, mom doesn't let me have a cherry with chocolate mint ice cream because it doesn't I'm taste good with that, it. but it still tastes good to me. That's fine. Did you already eat your cherry, Ben? Mm, I did. You did and you forgot? <laughs> well, I ate one cherry inside and he only had one. And this is my other cherry. It's a sugar cherry. Oh. Yummy. Well, I'll embrace this moment. That right there is our little tradition if everybody cleans their plates to get to eat some ice cream on the front porch. And well, I didn't want to say that in front of Emmy, but probably going to be the last time we do that. And uh, she would be very sad about that. But the good news is we have another porch in the works. And that's been the hardest thing, guys. I'm, I'm actually kind of glad it's been a bit of slow process uh, in many ways uh, because of the kids, just getting them used to the, the fact that we're going to move and we found a place finally that I just know it's the right spot. I just know it's it. It's, I'm also just excited to get over there and just have a fresh start. Uh, I just feel like I've been kind of on hold here with having to do all the all the projects and be around to, you know, clean up the house for showings and all that stuff. It just sucks. Moving sucks. There's no, there's no way around it. But uh, we're over the hump and it's about to be a bright and shiny new corner. <laughs> it's crazy, you guys. Have, uh, you've been here for a couple of moves with me, a lot of big life events. Uh, this is gonna be another one, a new chapter. So I'll see you then.